Hi, I made this video to show a quick way to emulate to a certain degree Leonardo da Vinci's uh, metal point drawing technique and for this we will need some water, a jar, a premixed gesso and a flat brush and also some colored inks in this case a red and a dark brown we start by taping down the paper this paper is uh, canson paper which has uh, 300 uh, grams which means it's quite thick paper uh, made for watercolor and uh, really holds on to um, lots of erasing and um, uh, it is, it is uh, uh, best suited for this uh, purpose and also it has a, a visible texture which I like and will help a lot we start by thinning down the gesso uh, the premixed gesso which is uh, from Le Franc it's quite thick for this purpose so I had to thin it down with uh, some water until I get some uh, milk like consistency we don't actually need some visible marks so uh, pretty thin uh, consistency and I'm adding now a couple of drops of uh, colored ink you don't actually need too much just a couple of drops will do the job because mainly we use the whiteness of uh, the gesso so we'll make a slightly off-white medium uh, tone medium tone gesso so you can see now the consistency and the uh, hue of this uh, gesso which is the kind of gesso Leonardo da Vinci extensively used on his uh, drawings on his metal point drawings but not only on his metal point drawings he seems to have uh, used the same kind of off-white preparation for his uh, imprimatura even on his uh, paintings the the adoration panel uh, really stands up for this uh, for this uh, color you could do uh, give two or three coats of uh, this kind of gesso uh, as you like <coughs> but uh, you'll have uh, you'll need to uh, retape this uh, paper once uh, this uh, just layer is dried because uh, as you can see now already starts to uh, make some uh, kind of waves and buckles and uh, you cannot really uh, draw on it uh, you need to wet the uh, back of the paper okay so uh, starting by showing you my tool which is in fact a silver wire 0 0.5 silver wire which is uh, inserted into a 0 0.5 mechanical pencil you can see now that the paper is perfectly stretched this was done by wetting the back of the paper and retaping down oh I should uh, mention also the reference image as you can see on the left side or uh, right side of the panel of the screen 
It's a painting made by Alessandro Araldi around the year 1495. A portrait of uh, Beatrice d'Este. Uh, this painting is, is located in Uffizi Gallery in Florence. And uh, Beatrice d'Este was actually the wife of uh, Lodovico il Moro. Lodovico Sforza, who was the ruler of uh, Milan, so pretty important character. As you can see, she's not the type of uh, beauty Leonardo would have liked to draw, so <laughs> I should imagine that Leonardo was not very passionate about uh, drawing this lady but uh, anyways uh, we could uh, let's say we could uh, have a pretty good uh, reference point upon we can upon which we can uh, construct our portrait so starting by roughly measuring uh, some key points like uh, the, the height of the nose, uh, the distance from the base of the nose to the chin um, and um, the distance from the tip of the nose to the back of his head, of her head and some indications like where's the pendant, how, how do you call it uh, in English, uh, that piece of jewelry which is uh, very beautiful and necklace and part of the chest and how this form how these forms are uh, related and how these forms are uh, working in the space you can see me now indicating the the eye and uh, I'm uh, from the start I'm uh, trying to get some angles right even if it's not the perfectly achieved uh, copy or let's say um, like a, s a slavish copy, but it's uh, we must. I mean, I must at least um, speaking for myself. I must be um, aware of these uh, key points and also the the profile, which is uh, at least interesting looking. Seems that uh, she has a pretty powerful jawline. And she was quite, quite chubby. <laughs> also, uh, since we are speaking about Leonardo's drawing techniques, we should, uh, I should mention that um, this is not 100% uh, uh, a traditional gesso it's uh, more like an um, improvised gesso because uh, sometimes you don't really have the time to really gather the material you need for uh, preparing the uh, traditional gesso which requires some time and um, sometimes I don't mean I don't have that time that spare time to prepare each each surface for uh, with a traditional gesso <clears throat> so I've uh, not invented because it's it's not I don't think it's uh, I've invented this uh, this uh, method but I found it that I find out I find out that the, you could uh, emulate a certain artist to a uh, and I don't know, I don't like to call this uh, method superficial, but 
in any ways it's it's not a chemical uh, it's not a traditional uh, gesso with a chemical uh, let's say uh, accuracy in terms of uh, materials used here but uh, anyways uh, this is a premixed gesso with which is a polymeric uh, emulsion and uh, these colored inks are all modern materials so uh, I'm not uh, I'm not worried about uh, using that the exact uh, material used in the 15th century because usually this ground was made with uh, bone ash and uh, kind of glue which was made from uh, rabbit skins rabbit skin glue and uh, a pigment and all this especially the rabbit skin glue uh, needs to be um, prepared in um, warm water uh, leave it overnight and then on the second day you will uh, slowly um, warm up the, this uh, this uh, this rabbit skin glue and then apply it uh, mix it with uh, some pigments and uh, the bone ash and apply it uh, make it to a uh, kind of uh, emulsion and apply it on the on the surface so I don't have all that time and uh, I found that uh, this this type of uh, recipe is suited for my purposes so uh, the metal point really leaves marks and uh, that's all I need for <clears throat> creating my own portrait so uh, it doesn't bother bother me uh, that, I, I'm, that I've made a, a modern uh, version of this recipe because uh, sometimes like I've said we don't have the time uh, which uh, Probably some of the old masters had, so we live in a uh, world where everything is done on a high speed and so on. So let's get back to our uh, drawing. So uh, uh, I should uh, also speak a little bit about uh, the. Uh, metal wire this uh, silver wire that I've used uh, usually after you cut this wire to a certain dimension a certain length you will have to you can't uh, you can't really insert it immediate, immediately on the 05 mechanical pencil because you'll need to send it a little bit down the edges because the cutting marks will really uh, scratch the surface so you'll have to smooth that uh, tip down with uh, very uh, very fine sandpaper and a little bit of water and really um, try it on different surfaces you should prepare uh, some pieces of paper separately and try it on them because uh, otherwise if you go straight to, to your drawing to your final surface you'll have uh, unpleasant surprises so try to make the tip as round as possible as you can until this uh, this wire will make some uh, visible marks and will not scratch actually the surface <coughs> Uh, also this uh, 
technique will require some uh, lots of patience because it doesn't work like uh, I don't know an HB mechanical pencil because uh, it's uh, much harder than uh, uh, mechanical pencil mine so you need a lot of patience the marks you're doing uh, need to be need to be uh, very I mean don't don't put pressure too much on this uh, stylus or uh, this tool you're using you can see me now that it really this gesso will hold to some extent to even to um, erasing and aggressive erasing because it's a polymeric uh, ground and of course it's more more uh, how should I call it more uh, tougher than the uh, traditional gesso much tougher <coughs> so slowly building building up the planes and uh, usually if you're looking at uh, Leonardo da Vinci and not only by uh, drawings by Leonardo da Vinci even Michelangelo Filippo Lippi uh, even Botticelli you could see that the, the first marks are uh, barely visible and uh, usually they start by applying a very fine layer I should call it layer although it's it's not a layer in the pictorial sense but it's, it's a layer of uh, shadow all over the area where uh, should be shadow and then upon that fine layer of uh, hatching they will build up uh, layers and layers of uh, shadows slowly um, e uh, either by doing uh, cross hatching or like in Leonardo's case uh, 45 degrees hatching Um, I'm seeing now that this really bothers me and I'm sorry for this uh, poor quality of uh, this uh, let's say part of the video because not all the video will look like this but I forgot for uh, some reason I don't know I, f I forgot to press the button which uh, locks the focus so and this is why the camera goes in and out of focus uh, I'm sorry for this if you want you can skip this part but I found it uh, very annoying since uh, it's one of the most important part of this uh, video in between the construction phase and uh, the shading phase uh, maybe you could find let's say on a not necessarily a static level but uh, some similarities between this drawing or this painting and uh, the newly discovered drawing by Leonardo da Vinci La Bella Principessa, which was uh, found by Mr. Martin Kemp, uh, connoisseur on Leonardo da Vinci and one of the leading authorities on uh, Leonardo da Vinci. And uh, the similarities should have been there because we are speaking uh, about uh, almost precisely the same um, the same age the same era where Beatrice d'Este was at the court of Milan and uh, presumably uh, Bianca was also there so we are speaking roughly 
about uh, the same uh, era so uh, similarities between them are on a fashion level to say so so we could see the same uh, hair arrangement and the same type of ponytail which I think the Italians called it Cozzone. I think it's it's I've I, I hope I I've spelled it right. Uh, maybe uh, people who are uh, Italians could correct me, but I'm pretty sure that this was the term used for that type of uh, tail ponytail which we see on the back of the skull uh, but also the headpiece which is very very beautiful and seems to have lots of uh, motifs uh, patterns which I think Leonardo da Vinci was not uh, stranger to it so uh, he might we can speculate that he might have had uh, drawn some uh, designs for uh, headpieces for jewelry and so on for uh, Lodovico's uh, Sforza's uh, court so why not so uh, if Leonardo would have done a portrait of uh, Beatrice d'Este which he hasn't done we don't have a proof of it we should see some uh, some let's say embroidery embroidery uh, elements uh, like this fine example we see on this painting so uh, yeah I'm pretty sure that the artist uh, Alessandro Aldi uh, <laughs> would have uh, spent more more days and more more hours on that headpiece uh, compared to the face because it has infinitely more more details and more uh, let's say more patterns more volumes than the actual face the face has I must admit a little bit flat but anyways it, it's a good opportunity for us to invent some things um, to speculate uh, on the in drawing in the drawing process to speculate okay how uh, this lady would have had her nose in real life or uh, how how I mean how was uh, what color had her has on her had on her eyes uh, and, uh, different types of so this is a, a type of speculation so this is not a straightforward copying because I as you know from my previous videos I don't like to make straightforward copies it's it's not my profession it's not my desire and mm, of course it's not my goal in my artistic life to copy exactly what I see I see because uh, the, I feel that it's not it's not something which develops uh, the skills I mean it develops to a certain level but you'll reach to a level, you'll reach uh, on a level where you will actually really need to put something from your own experience, from your own vision. Otherwise, it becomes lifeless, uh, becomes a methodology, which is not bad, but it's, it's not your, like, it's not your deepest desire as far as uh, your artistic life so
but always remember your if you have a reference like I have uh, I have on my right side uh, a reference image with Leonardo drawing an authenticated uh, Leonardo drawing uh, and uh, see what he has done with the sh shadows uh, what he has done with the line language what he has done with the um, let's say uh, construction of the head and how he suggests I mean on the more sketchy drawings we see from Leonardo da Vinci we could see his incredible power of suggestion I mean even if he had uh, has drawn like a fugitive uh, shadow that shadow is perfectly placed and it suggests that is a volume there or it's a, it's another it's a, it's a, another dimension there it's it's something behind the head or it's air behind the 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 the, the hair or uh, the suggestion of space is is really incredible on Leonardo da Vinci I'm drawing now the construction for the necklace which is quite uh, quite a big necklace showing the uh, richness and power of the ruling class and by uh, when I've drawn th this uh, necklace I've uh, observed that um, it's the only place, not the only place, but one of the places where you could see the direction of light by um, watching closely the, the, the shadow, the shadow part. So it's a kind of upper left side, upper left side um, lighting. which is quite unusual because we should expect some more shadows underneath her chin and maybe a uh, slight and slight casted shadow on the neck and maybe some stronger shadows on the sides the side planes of the, her face But again, this is not a Leonardo da Vinci, this is a portrait, could be a copy after an original, could be an original, I don't really know, and um, not very interested to know, but anyways, uh, some details, even done in uh, this fashion, which is not, in any case, near to Leonardo da Vinci's style, um, not his quality, not his type of uh, face, but anyways you can see some really important details like um, general shape of the face, uh, mouth and hair and stuff like that, I mean gives you a, a good reason to redraw it <laughs> and I'm speaking about myself now I'm really attracted to not so good pieces of art uh, with all the respect to the gentleman who painted this uh, original uh, portrait um, I really like to change some things sometimes and uh, this was the case uh, the inspiration came from uh, 
me searching a certain image and I came across this one and I said okay let's 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 try to recompose it and let's try to give it an a more authentic air which is an impossibility because I'm living in the in this century and this lady lived in the 15th century and I am not even closer to her so I could all I could uh, only speculate on this thing so this is what 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 my idea is to um, find a certain portrait which is not the m from the main league of uh, great artists and try to give it a more at least from my point of view a more uh, quality more of a quality aspect so this will uh, train a lot your imagination your uh, your power to invent things which is uh, the most desirable um, attribute of an artist so even this image puts your imagination to your to the test and um, it's a win situation because you really push yourself to make it uh, more real more uh, fresh more uh, studied more you know and this is uh, I forgot to mention this um, I was speaking about Leonardo but I forgot to mention this very important aspect uh, Leonardo da Vinci when he drew a certain let's say the headpiece um, that strap or whatever it is that horizontal piece uh, that holds the <coughs> the back piece of the head um, if he drew it he drew it in the perfect uh, perspective which is not the case here it seems that uh, this elliptic uh, shape uh, was drawn like if the the viewer stands a little bit above the model so uh, I've made it like uh, the viewer stands uh, exactly on the same height and uh, you could test this by just looking at the uh, elliptic shape of the eye let's say the upper eyelid and if you put it in the same perspective with the that headpiece that elliptic shape you'll see that they are not on the same on the same eye level on the same uh, perspective point So Leonardo wouldn't have missed that. So he was a master of uh, seeing shapes in space and uh, manipulating this uh, this media. Again, you could with the metal point you could go over and over um, as long as you don't damage the surface because once you've done a scratch it's practically 
um, very hard to um, recover that that uh, that area so don't put too much pressure on the stylus you you'll see if you start uh, drawing with the metal point and it's your first time you'll see that uh, in time in with patience you will uh, develop uh, this uh, more stronger contours but not that strong like if you have it with a HB pencil or maybe a 1B or 2B uh, pencil so it's it doesn't have that strong uh, strong mark but it's uh, very subtle you could you could uh, construct uh, shadows which are looking like they are very diffused um, very subtle I've said it and um, this was one of the main reason why Leonardo da Vinci mastered this uh, medium very well partly because he was um, a great student of Verrocchio and partly because he had uh, clay sculpture training so he could see the forms where a painter who was just a painter would have never seen it so it's clearly that it's clearly that he had uh, quite um, advanced clay scu sculpture training I'm getting closer to the end of this uh, video so I wish to thank you and hopefully I will do another video soon. Bye.